afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, parents, and welcome to the 2021 Grade 7 briefing. We meet amidst issues that are going to affect not only the learners, but parents and the school together. This briefing is very important in the life of your child and going back on exam skills this year with your child having completed grade six and now geared for grade seven. This briefing is meant to give you information in regard to what you and of course the role of the school. Grade seven is the final, final school grade your child is having to go through this year. And so there are certain areas that we want you to know, to be aware, areas such as the issues of homework, attendance, and so forth. With me this afternoon to present this will be the two class teachers, Mrs. Gunda and Mrs. Astina. Mrs. Gunda will be handling grade 7 red, Mrs. Astina grade 7 blue. But before I hand over to the two teachers, let me also give special mention that there are certain requirements that we would want you to get for your child before the report for classes. And the most important one I want to look at is the design and technology. We know that last year we had a number of pupils in the two classes missing out on this subject because they didn't have instruments. Expected to sit for eight papers at the end of the year, design technology is one of the key subjects now that your child has to uh, undertake. And it's a practical subject, so meaning it's hands-on. A pupil without instruments is as good as staying home instead of attending classes. So we want to make sure that you make sure you require and purchase these instruments before classes commence, hopefully as the government has put it, 1st of February. With those few remarks, let me also mention one item that we sent, we posted, secondary school of choice form, and we hope that if you have not completed that, it will be completed because the deadline for submission is today. We want to register your daughter, your son, for 2021 grade seven exams. And this is Ed is waiting for schools to submit that information. So please do so if you haven't yet submitted to school. So very important. Let's look forward to a successful year. At the end of it all, as we, we progress in our discussions, please feel free to send in your questions. That will be answered later on. Uh, I'll send them via Facebook. I'm sure at the end of it, we'll try to respond to those queries uh, uh, at the end of the briefing. So thank you very much for coming. Hoping that we have a successful discussion together. Thank you. So I hand you over to Mrs. Gunda, who takes over to take you through the other details. Thank you, Mrs. Gunda. Over to you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Nirongo. As he has already mentioned, I'm Mrs. Gunda, CE. 
I will be in charge of Seven Raid 2021. I'll be in charge of Seven Raid 2021. I have a few items to discuss with you parents this afternoon. To begin with, I'll um, tackle punctuality. Punctuality is very, very important. At Kalustra School, Sorry, 7.30. So 7.20, we expect the child, your child, to be seated in class. What do we do between 7.20 and 7.30? The children will settle down, they'll go through uh, spelling, they'll go through, they'll ask questions from previous lessons. So it's important the child is seated by 7.20 before we begin lessons at 7.30. Uniforms. Kalushtra school, we, um, we have for girls a gym dress like this one, gray gym dress. We also do allow gray socks for the girls. The gym dress and the pants will go with a white shirt. White shirt. She will have the white shirt with the logo, Kalushtra School, on that, on top of the pocket like that. And for the boys, we have gray shorts, a pair of shorts, gray. And again, we do allow a pair of trousers, gray pair of trousers. And again, to go with the white shirt. So many shades of gray. We do have light, dark. The gray for the dress is this one. It will also have our logo, school logo on the left hand side. Uh, for PE, we do have these house color t shirts. For the children already know which houses they belong to. If your child belongs to a Zambezi, it's in yellow. A black pair of shorts for PE, of course, with trainers and sports shorts. And for Luangwa, it's a red one. Again, to go with a black pair of shorts, trainers, and sports shorts. For Kariba, it's a blue t shirt. We do, however, So we allow a child to come with a white t-shirt. That is when we are having PE. That is on uniforms. Hairstyles. For girls, this is where we have a problem. Girls do come with a lot of hairstyles. Sometimes the hair, we do not allow framed hair, by the way. We do not allow framed hair. A child is supposed to do mukule, what Keep the length of the braid or mesh shoulder height. It must not go up to, I mean, it must not be too long. It should be shoulder length like that, up to there. Um, this same type of uh, hairstyle, a child can do fishtail, no problem. As long as this is coming up here yeah. and we do a ponytail, it's fine. And No. A boy will come with shorts, they call the, they call the pattern dress shirt and English. Those two. Those are the ones we allow. No fancy uh, haircuts for boys. No. Homework. For homework, Mondays and Wednesdays, we expect the child to come home with English homework. Monday and Wednesday, the child will come with English homework. Tuesday, Thursday, the child will come home with mathematics homework. Friday.
days. A child will come home with either social studies homework or science homework or PTA. In some cases, we may send two of those three. We may send social studies and science or science and PTA or PTA and social studies. So in short, every day, a child will come home with Um, when we say we ask for homework now for the children to bring in some things, because yes, sometimes we'll be sending homework for a child to come and do at home. Sometimes we'll be asking, maybe we're looking at science and science. We would ask that child to bring in a plant, it's part of homework. A child can bring a plant in class, and then we learn about that plant in, in class. We will be maybe looking at how to preserve. Who we'll ask for a child to bring a sample of carpenter, a sample of fish, how fish is dry, I mean, how a dried fish, a dried carpenter, uh, dried beans, and all that. All that is part of homework. Now, written homework. Like I've mentioned, on Friday, we'll be giving social studies or science or teaching. Maybe a child comes home with a worksheet. That worksheet. Instead of you signing in the book, you will sign on the worksheet itself. If that worksheet has a name on, a, uh, on it, like it, it, it will now belong to that, that child. Sometimes some worksheets, we tell the children these worksheets, you return them for future use. So you just copy the, question, the, the work from the worksheet into your book. Then the signing will be into the exercise book. But for a worksheet, you need, uh, as parents, you need to sign on the worksheet itself because uh, it will have a name of the child there. Still on homework, if a child has come home with homework, please, as parents, you let a child do his or her own work. Homework is just a follow up of what we've been doing in class. So it's also a uh, Has the child grasped the concept or what? So if you're going to help a child, it will not, um, we will not know whether that child has gotten the concept or not. So the best thing to do is to let the child do his or her own homework. Your job is just to sign. The signing is not to say the, the work which the child has done is correct. It could be correct, yes, but the signing is to show that you have seen that your home, the child came home with homework and yes, a child did his homework. Whether wrong or right, it's up to us now to come and say, why is this work wrong? Then we sit down with the child and then discuss with, the, with, with her or him. Sometimes we do get notes from the, from the parents to say, my child has not understood homework. That is very, very good. We do encourage that. Except that the, the notes should be in a book, we call communication book, not in a, an exercise book for a child. So when you indicate, when you let your child do his or her homework, you will indicate that your child struggled. If we get, for example, two, three, four comments, even five comments from uh, teachers to say their children struggled with homework, that will be information enough for us Probably. So we we'll need to reteach that topic so that the children can get the concept correctly. For now, I think I'll end here. I'll just ask Mr. Sicilia to come and uh, uh, talk about what is being said. Thank you, Mr. Sicilia. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kunda. Uh, grade 7 is a, a grade that he, parents, most parents would like to see their children go to their secondary school, their choice. And they enjoy by seeing them scoring above 800. 
And as teachers as well, we feel better when most of our learners score above 800. And for us to achieve that, we do a lot of work, which is accompanied with 49 tests. And these tests are recorded themselves. And mom or dad to acknowledge that they are supporting something. Whether the child has scored below 50 or above 50, our role is just to sign and encourage the learners. It's yes, we know that he, term one is always an issue where when a test is given out, you expect some learners to get even as below as 20%. It's not the time that we should be now shouting at our, our children now. It's the time that we should encourage them and find out why our children are scoring low marks. And then possibly see the teachers concerned, because we are the two teachers. Then you will be able to see the way forward and help the learners. In addition to the 49 tests, the government has also introduced what is known as school-based assessment. This school-based assessment adds now to the final exam, about 30%. So in short, we are saying it's crucial from the way to go, as they will be doing the appointment test there, as well as also the school-based assessments, which will be added to their final exam. Then for, the, for, for them to do well, yes, we expect them to, to have books, and these books are displayed on the table, which are in line with the current syllabus. We have the authors like Let's Do, we have the long one, then we have MK, and then we have the junior E. These can be obtained from any bookshop around. You can go to Kitu, you find them, some are even sold along the corridors, but we have to be mindful of what we are getting. It should be in line with the syllabus. Then when you look at it, when we talk about the, the, their, their studies, from term one, there are certain children that form study groups. Those that are based in Kitwe, maybe Sana East, you find that they form groups. Those that are based in Riverside, they form study groups in Karuloshi. As parents, let's be mindful. Sometimes they form these study groups in order to escape from home so that they can do, go and do activities which are not, which are not good. In, in that way, personally, I encourage the, the parents to, to, to have their children maybe studying from different homes. They can be maybe it's a Saturday, they are maybe at Mrs. Gaudi's home. The other Saturday, they may go to Mrs. Ventura's home so that parents are checking, are the children doing what is right? Sometimes you can just go there briefly to find out. You find whether they are studying, social studies are doing mathematics, instead of wasting their time maybe playing around. We, we can't avoid study groups because they are very, very important. We benefit, those we benefit from one another. Others can be good in mathematics, others are good in social studies. Through that, you find that the learners, they help one another in the group. Okay? Apart from that, then we, we have to look at communication. Communication between the, the school, or between the class teacher and each child has got a communication issue. If things are not well, dear parents, let's have time to, to communicate to the teachers. And teachers as well will do communicate through the same book. So that uh, between the two, we are able to help the child who is the center. Because I always say, when a child is in an examination class, three people are, are writing the exam. The teacher, the child, and the parent and the child is at the center. So for us to have this child do well, it must be, we must be encouraged and mother, father, and the teacher. In short, it's home and the school. And when we work, we work together like that, we find that our, our little ones will get what we expect them to get. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kunda mentioned uh, something to do with punctuality. I love children that come to school early. Because when they come to school early, I'll be able to, to mark even homework before even the lessons start at 7.30. I will have time to move around and check my work and even help those that have got problems before the normal, the normal lessons start. As for now, I don't... I
said and what I've mentioned, if there are questions that need to be clarified, then you will be able to answer them before the time comes to an end. Thank you very much. Mr. Stella mentioned about uh, fortnight test. Those fortnight tests, we do have booklets, uh, report cards like this one. A child, after we mark the test, a child will come home with this booklet for a parent to sign and we'll be monitoring how a child will be progressing from test one up to the time the child will do his or her final exams. These books are very, very important. Uh, when they come home, please let's um, encourage the, the uh, pupils to put the books in the plastic bag so that they're not soiled. Last year we had cases of um, report books being soiled and uh, parents making an effort, we don't know whether it was a parent or a child herself or himself, making an effort to photocopy that booklet and bringing it back to school. We appreciated the effort, yes, but please it's um, important that the child takes care of the booklet. It's very, very important. At grade 7 level, the children do not stop reading. Reading will help them a lot. Will help them a lot. So a child, again, can be coming home with this booklet where we record um, a child, um, the book that a child has taken home. So the child will have two books. So, like Mr. Nirongo said, um, we are expecting some questions that are coming via Facebook, but if we do have questions here in the audience, we can take them now. Thank you. If we do have questions in here, we can take them before we start reading those that are coming via Facebook. Um, yes, ma'am. Under the current arrangement, yes. If there will be any change, we wait for the government position on that one. But as things stand right now, yes, school should open on Monday, the 1st of February. Any other questions? Here. I, I would like to add on that you know, uh, many a time pupils have come to complain because mom or dad has been very rough because they think a child is playful. Results not being good, the parent gets angry and smacks the child. Now, the moment you do Modern education philosophy does encourage a good rapport between you, the parent, and the child. If you discover the child is not doing well after getting the results, sit down, find out where the problem is. When you are very open and free with your child, they will feel very free to let you know where the challenges could be coming from. And from there, you will find a way of helping. Because the girl or the boy might just say, I think what I need are the textbooks, which I don't have at all, which we have in school. Meaning, I don't have access to the books that we have in school. So you can go into the bookshops, Book World, Life Trail, uh, Dale Den, there are some of those bookshops in town. Go there and just ask for the books. The primary school books are well labeled. You just say, I want book seven. Whether it's mathematics, they will show you these books. And they will show you, uh, if it's English, you want. Uh, they will show you books for science and so forth. Try by all means to be the best friend of your child. If you want the best, 
results. Never create fear in your child. Because what will happen is, the moment you reach home, the child will be the first one to scamper away. He has come, or she has come. And they know it's trouble. Be the first one, they will welcome home. You should be the first one to have first-hand information on what's happening in school. when you want the learner to be seated in the classroom with a very peaceful mind, ready to think freely and express themselves. The examiner has learned to find a way of testing the levels of intelligence in these children. All the questions that need to come based on memory or knowledge are no longer there now. Those of you who might have read the book of education psychology, you will have come across what is called Bloom's taxonomy. Now, Bloom's taxonomy does lay emphasis on what the learner should be drilled through in terms of skills in learning. The examiner now wants to find out whether this learner is able to apply the knowledge learned or not. And not memory. Remember questions in the past such as, where do you find Mount Kilimanjaro? And the, the learner just look at the paper, oh yes, Tanzania, yes. Where is the source of the Zambezi River? Those questions are long gone now. They are not there. The learner now is asked questions. Look at the map. Village X. What do you think the occupation of the people in village X could be? Why do you think the people in that village have, they concentrate more on fishing than on agriculture? So try to sit down them through some of these. Where, like Mrs. Kunda mentioned, where the questions are wrongly done, it's not your job to start correcting your child. No. Sign the work. The teacher here is basically like a medical doctor. You know when a doctor gives you a prescription, take this medicine, come back after a week, what does the review do? To help the doctor know whether the drug that was given has worked. Because from that information, other patients will benefit. And so, when the teacher finds that this child had a problem doing this work, it is enough information for the teacher. Failure on the part of the child is not failure on the part of the child alone. It takes two to tango the learner and the teacher. It could be that the way I introduced the topic personally as a teacher was not the most effective way. So I must begin to question myself. I think I need to reintroduce this topic. And maybe this time around, do it this way or that way. So let's be with our learners all the time and encourage them, inspire them. It's going to be a tough year, but you, the parents, the school, and the learner, three coordinates should be able to provide enough facilities to allow our children to uh, complete the year successfully. There was a hand up. Yes. Yes. Um, two questions. Yes. One is. Um, what is the format of the, the exam going to be? Uh, and two, um, the way you've explained, you're saying we shouldn't assist with correction. Um, so what is our role if we're, if we're not able to uh, assist in correction of, 
that homework has been done. Whether right or wrong, homework has been done. I think guidance is given that on Monday, they will have, Monday and Wednesday, they will have English and? English. English homework on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, as you go home, you know. Today is Monday. Have you got your homework? Yes. Have you done it? Yes. See and decide. to teach, not your job. The reason is simple. You might want to help your child very well, but sometimes the method you might use at home and the method used in school, the two methods might be different. So two conflicting methods, the child is the one who becomes the victim, becomes even more confused. No, dad said you find the answer this way. The school is saying you must find the answer this way. We try by all means to use some of the simplest methods as agreed among ourselves in the CSA. CSA is made up of all the former VCCM trust schools. We meet very often to plan our schemes and the try to see which direction we go in various subjects. So all those classes that used to be under VCCM, we are still well linked. That enables us to help our learners to do transfer, say from Inkana to Karurushi, or from Karurushi to Mufuira. These children are not at a loss. So basically that's the, that's the point. the second one. Uh, those schools listed there are just examples. You can choose any government school, any grant-aided school on the Copper Belt. I think if you look at those examples, they are basically Karurushi schools. I don't have the names right now, but I'm sure they are basically Karurushi uh, government schools. So you can choose, for example, you're in Kitwe, you can choose Helen Kaunda, you can choose Kitwe Boys, Mukuba, and so forth. You can choose St. Marcelin. <coughs> Any government school or grant-aided school, but you can't choose a private school. <coughs> private schools, you will apply, just like you apply to the English classes, you trust me, you will apply. If, for example, you want your child to come here for grade eight, sometime in August, September, you can come and apply to come for grade eight next year. So yes, that one is, uh, please feel free to choose. Don't choose in Pereme. No, it's a private school. You can't choose Simba, Rachel, those are private schools. But you can choose Ibenga, Fatima, Tobit, uh, those are grant aided. You can't choose Ndola Girls Taking. You can't choose that one because that's a national school. Meaning, depending on the results that your child obtains, the government is the one that will select your child to be sent to that school.
school-based assessment. It's a new addition by the Curriculum Development Center, uh, ECZ, and basically our education system, that we seem to have been relying too much on a written paper maybe that's done just under one hour, and make judgments and say, this one has failed, or this one has passed. We need to develop an education system that contributes to the full assessment of the individual. Individuals are not the same. We have individual differences. There are those who are very good at theory work. Tell them something, they will remember and they will give you a good feedback. Others are very good at practical work. And so the new system This child will be sitting for that exam at the end of the year, which will be out of 70%. 30% marks will have already been accumulated through the school based assessment. Now, the fortnightly tests are not part of that. The school based assessment, in fact, will be. There are simple exercises to be had that these children will be given in class to perform. Because psychologically, when one is taught to say, I, I believe so many of us sometimes are guilty of, and when the doctor, you go in and the doctor says, um, I think you undergo an operation. And for some people, immediately the BP just shoots up. All along, this person was okay. And all of a sudden, they start sweating. So, these assessments are meant to allow children to perform freely. Simple tasks that may be given to them. Some of them may be based on public speaking. Let's say English, for example. We are presenting an assembly, and you know they are raw here when they come to speak. So that is one way. Others may be mathematical problems. Okay, we are going to, uh, you are going, this group here, you are going to measure the area of the natural court. So they, they've learned the formula for area in class. And so as a group, they go to measure, oh, the length is this, the width is this, and so forth. And the assessments are done like that. So out of the, by the end of the year, this child maybe will have already accumulated, say, maybe 19 out of 30. That 19 will be added to the score in the final exam. And maybe we, we look forward to a future where there will be more of such than just the written work in the classroom. So that's why it's coming from. And the, I believe these will be the first ones these will be the first ones in the history of the country to undergo through that phase. So there are changes coming. But for me, I think it's a very good change. It's a very good change. Uh, our parents were out there, but George, one of them. Volume, I suppose uh, we, yeah, anything that can be done? Something about, about volume? We have addressed that. Okay. Okay, online sending of forms. I suppose this, this can be done. Is Mr. Zombie here? This can be done. You have the new addresses. Yeah. 
Yes, assuming you haven't uh, submitted your form, you can send for primary, uh, sending to uh, primary school. This, I believe, is primary at Karushi Trust ZM dot Microsoft dot ZM. ZM dot Microsoft dot ZM. That's for primary, the email address. Those want to send to the secondary school, secondary at Karushi Trust ZM dot Microsoft dot ZM. For accounts, you want to send an email to the accounts department. Accounts. dot microsoft dot zm I'll run through again for primary is primary at Karushi Trust zm dot microsoft dot zm secondary is secondary at Karushi Trust zm dot microsoft dot zm accounts So those are the email addresses for those who may want to submit online and indeed make any inquiry. So that has been done. Uh, School-based assessments, these I think you we have addressed. Uh, it's not weekly and it will be done at an optimum time and planned by the teachers. So they are well aware. This is uh, an exercise that has been conducted already by the Ministry of Education across the whole country. There were workshops conducted for teachers and we have the handbook in school to guide the teachers on how to go about. The assessments start from grade five. When a child enters the grade five year, academic year. That's where these assessments start from. And so there will be one record, booklet if you like, from grade five. All the results from grade five will be recorded there. The same booklet will be handed over to the grade six teacher the following year. Grade six results will be recorded there. From grade six, they'll be handed over to the grade seven teacher. And at the end of the year, the final results sent to ECZ. basically continuous assessment to make it simple. Any questions? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Indira. My daughter is the artist. I think she asked about the exam. And then I said, could you repeat that question? Right. I said that the, the, oh. the format that's going to be used for that written part of the exam. Grade seven. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, all grade seven papers are basically multiple choice. All of them are multiple choice. So, wh what you discover at the beginning, they tend to struggle when we start. But as we get into term two, what you come to discover then, they begin to score. High marks. High marks totally different from the grade six year or grade five year. Reason is simple. Once they've gotten these concepts, because you know, real learning in the trust school, primary curriculum, goes up to you can say end of grade six year. That's why it provides to spend a lot of time on revision and assessments, such that by the end of June, they will have become so well acquainted with most of the basic concepts in their various subjects. And they start scoring highly because you know how much for choice is. If you have really been grilled very well, 
It's a matter of looking at the four options given, and even when you have forgotten the answer, you get reminded when you see it there. And you see all of a sudden, marks start shooting up. Where sometimes the class average marks, you find in a subject, even goes as high as 96%. Meaning maybe the lowest mark could be 91%. And for us, we emphasize the best we want is the minimum average mark in every subject for our own passing grade to be 90%. So a child who scores below 90% in the subject, we don't consider that as a pass mark. But we also, and it's our duty to groom them to come to that level. And we hope we will make it. We have done it in the past, and it's our aim to try and beat our own record. I think the highest we have gone in the grade 7 final exam average mark was 810. And that year we scored that average mark. No other school in the country reached the, has, has reached that average mark. It's not easy because we always have others you know, who, are, who are weak, others very strong, and it's our job to make sure that even those weak ones, we help them through and push them to get to that level. At the end of the year, we want to assure you that your child will succeed and go to a school of their choice. Girls have got a it's the boys where we have a limit. Of course, there is now a new private school that has opened up in Karurushi here, oh, some kilometers from Karurushi, called the Liberty Boys Boarding School. It will be enrolling the first grade eights this year, that school. So maybe uh, this opportunity is coming, but would encourage most of our pupils to continue within our system. But the choice remains yours indeed. Mrs. Gowdy. Thank you. Um, I'm from the first school, so I want to find out will they be having tutorials and opportunities for the next year? Thank you. Uh, Thank you for coming. Please feel free to operate on the open door policy and the, uh, anytime these speakers are ready available. Thank you very much for coming. And have a well.